Okay, I didn't know what was going. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on there. Anyways, welcome back. Uh, this is Chili Games. We have a gameplay that I had last night, actually in the Belfast, which is a ship that I actually love a lot. Um, the Soviet cruisers kind of overshadow it, but used in the right ways, this ship can be so much fun to play and just pump out so much HE and. Basically, what I want to emphasize in this video is some of the best ways to make credits in this game. And if you've played it for a while, and if you don't have premium or whatnot, no premium ships, it is an absolute grind. I know when I first started, uh, I grinded the Colorado and to get Iowa. And doing that tier 6 grind in the Colorado, which is a tough ship to play without premium, it without a premium ship was, it I mean, it was just hell on earth. It, it was it was pretty bad. Um, so, a couple tips on gaining money. So obviously, premium time is a huge investment. I really don't know what your situation is. For me, I was kind of tight on money. Still, I enjoyed this game. I put time into it, so I invested in premium time. Uh, it's. 100% if you let the game is 100% uh, worth your money it will make the grind seem uh, you'll, you'll feel I guess more fulfilling when you complete matches so premium time obviously another thing that I've been looking at is obviously this AFK uh, teammate behind me <laughs> another thing that I've been seeing a lot on the reddit and just general questions is which premium ships to buy and I am someone who played over I would say around 2,000 matches before I actually got my first real premium and real premium in terms of buying it outright uh, which was for me the Nelson. Nelson is a tier 6 British battleship. Uh, I had choices of Skarnhorst, all those things, yada yada, it doesn't really matter. Um, people say tier 5 is the one, one of the most consistent places to earn money and I, I agree if you are you know a, a casual player or you're still learning tier 5 is a really safe bet here and I'm gonna pause this real quick just because you see we have no support here and I'm actually really anxious going into this cap because I don't want to get spotted here because if I have to smoke up I'll probably have no targets and I just don't want to be there anyways taking a risk here it works out uh, continuing on with the uh, the premium ship aspect Tier 5 will yield you really consistent credits. The only problem with that, I fear, is that once you start getting better and better, you will probably learn that Tier 6 is a really, really, like, how should I put this? It, for me, it's one of the best tiers to play in terms of making money. Obviously, this is this is a pretty good game on my end, so the credits earned at the end is actually pretty ridiculous. But tier five, you can make credits. Tier six, if you want to absolutely maximize the most out of your credit gain, tier six is your best bet. Uh, the competition may be a little bit steeper, but I assume if you keep playing once you get better, you probably are going to be comfortable in tier six, just as you were at tier five. So. If you're debating on whether going up tier and you know you're not really comfortable playing tier six or whatever, I would still advise getting a tier six premium if you're thinking about it. Uh, Belfast was super easy to get uh, with the campaign. Atlanta, you know, a lot of people have Atlanta. It doesn't go on sale. Um, Scarn Horse is a really, really, really popular um, choice. Um, in my opinion, premium time and tier 6 premium is your best way of making money in this game. Uh, and also running those flags, if you combine like one of those 40% credit flags on top of one of these games and you luck out and have an extremely good game, um, you will see that, you know, the credits you earn, the global XP, the experience is ridiculous, especially compared to just having like a, a random game in tier 6 you know you can probably max out you know you can net you know 200k uh, pretty easily but I think I've seen someone post like a 1.2 million credit 
game or something in Atlanta. It's just ridiculous. And so I just kind of wanted to make a quick little, not rant, I should say. I guess just my opinion, um, if you're banking on a Tier 5 premium, I would urge you to maybe keep playing and play for a Tier 6 because if you... The more I played, the more Tier 5 kind of got boring to me. I, I really only played Tier 7 and Tier 6. Tier 5 just for kind of, you know, giggles. <laughs> so to me, to feel competitive, I like to play Tier 6 and Tier 7. Obviously, that's kind of, you know, different for everybody. Um, Going to be coming into the game right here. We're in a lot of trouble. Um, we have captured this base down here, but obviously my fear right now is that by the time we get over towards C, that entire team will be flattened. And then I really don't like the odds of us trying to win <laughs> against these forces. But obviously, look, this, this played out perfect for me because Belfast has a smoke screen, and that's one of your best little gimmicks. So, um, one of the worst things to be in the ship is to be caught without your smoke screen, uh, especially if you can't disengage because you have no heals, you're very squishy. So, having a smoke screen ready to pop is extremely useful. And here, we're spotted from a cruiser down there, but there's no one around to punish us. And we are constantly resetting this Dunkirk at sea, which is so satisfying because this entire time I'm solo capping a base and I'm farming defend metals which is another thing in the gameplay to make money metals make money uh, there's no real like there's no like concrete number for how much they earn but getting defend metals uh, and capturing bases especially solo capping gives you tons of XP and XP means money basically so right here, I'm just I'm farming so much money just by capping this base and defending C, and we're not spotted. We still have all three smokes, and trust me, if you can save a smoke and go undetected and still be useful behind an island, by all means. I mean, it's you know this was honestly the perfect, the perfect kind of play here to be in the perfect spot. Also, because if you see our two ships up there in the corner, they are severely outgunned. So now. I'm taking the pressure of the Dunkirk off of them, which I honestly thought those two guys at the top left were going to be just sailing broadside and Dunkirk was going to be sitting there just pelting them. Uh, you see me switch the Maoko there only because I knew that he was in the cap and he, he was uh, gathering capture points, so I shot at him just to reset him. We actually get decent damage, like it was like 3300 damage on him. Not bad. So we, we reset him, and at this point, you know, we're undetected. Dunkirk can't do anything. He's actually focused on those two down there. So for me, this is just sitting pretty. We're actually going to start shooting AP now because since he's used damage con, he will be invulnerable. Vulnerable? Invulnerable? Why can't I say that word right now? He will be immune to fires for however long his damage con is out. And do not knock the AP on this thing, it's actually it's insanely good, and especially since you're shelling out 12 of them. Uh, once his damage con comes off, I give it usually two salvos, I switch back to HE, and this guy is all dead. We took the pressure off of our two guys up top. Our two guys at the bottom are actually playing pretty passive here. But obviously if you look at the screen, there's three ships that aren't spotted right now, and they were last spotted pretty close, so I don't blame them. And it actually works out because, you know, you can't really trust people in a random game. Um, <laughs> sometimes it'll work out, and, you know, you're like... some Sometimes in these games you'll have those moments where, like, something works out and your team did something, and it's just an absolute crazy moment. Uh, at this point... Uh, I'm pushing this gap. Um, one, obviously, because I have a smoke screen. I know if I overcommit here, I can smoke up. And I can use the two guys um, that are spotting up there with their face, pretty much, to spot for me. So I have no problem pushing this Gunizen out. Uh, he's also turning, so I'm taking advantage of this. And 
I kind of come around this corner and get kind of scared because I get spotted. And I'm like, man, that kind of sucks. I, I could have killed this guy uh, and not been spotted. Which would have been ideal. Again, he's in C. Um, I can't really see how many defense we have, I forget. But this whole time, you know, we're just we're lighting fires, we're getting defend medals. End up killing this guy, which is huge because I really didn't want him to get a volley off. We pop a smoke in the perfect spot to have broadside of the Bayer in here. Which is really nice. And another really nice thing is that these teammates to the left of me are actually doing a really good job of kiting and kind of stalling these guys' push. Because, I mean, we have... It's been like five or so minutes, and these guys have stayed alive against pretty much all odds, and their team hasn't pushed them hard enough to really take advantage of it. But one of them goes down. Luckily, you'll see me look over here because I'm wondering how much more time I'll have uh, support here. Or I should in a second. Uh, but at this point, I know no one's pushing me. I see uh, the graph to be is basically full health, so at this point, I'm super confident that we can turn this around. Um, killing Bayern should be, you know, easily done. We kind of get unlucky with the fires here. Like, <laughs> these next couple salvos, I'm like, man. Or maybe it's not here. It might be these three, and then we stick them with two, I think, in the next salvo. So it was kind of like, okay, fine. Yeah, see, like, the last three shells on that salvo start lighting up a fire. Since he has two fires burning, my damage is going on him passively. I turn my guns towards other targets to maximize my, I guess my fire starting ability and my ability to spread the damage around. Uh, Cause I'm gonna smoke screen right now so I can just shoot whoever. I have a feeling that Mayuko, Mayuko is going to give me the biggest problems. Uh, Bayern's gonna die pretty soon. Uh, so the, the next threat is, threat is the Mayuko, especially because if he's smart, he'll play at range and he could outrange me. I see Baron here, and this was actually the Baron that spawned on our side. He has looped around the entire match. So, I don't really have good angles at Mayoko. Uh, York is kind of over the island, so I luckily can blind fire this Baron. And what I mean by blind fire there is he can't take advantage and shoot me. Uh, Mayoko is, no one's, no one's bothering me. This entire game was perfect for Belfast. Because I was able to put damage out and I was able to, you know, stay hidden. And as you see, um, what I love so much about the HE, especially for these spamming ships, is sometimes, you know, switching the AP would be the best choice for some broadside targets. But at a certain range, uh, your AP becomes less and less effective. So, um, when in doubt, shoot HE, honestly, until they get this close. When he was this close and turning, I was like, my, I was salivating. I was like, please, please, please. Getting some nice citadels there. Um, I honestly thought York was playing smart here, and I was like, no, nah, he's actually not going to pop out. So, he <laughs> he pops out. Oh, uh, it's just, it was so satisfying. I, that would have been so much sati more satisfying if I got both of them at the same time. We squeak away with the double strike and the Kraken. Um, at this point in the match, I don't... Uh, I do not believe that German dispersion will kill me, so I get kind of reckless here. We've pretty much won the game. Uh, if this Baron was able to kill all three of us, you know, at this kind of time, I, I would have just messaged him and given him a medal. But we got kind of greedy, got kind of scary on that one, but you saw that I throttled down. Uh, I'm never, when I play cruisers, I'm never keeping a solid pace. I'm always zigzagging, I'm always throwing up, throwing down, stuff like that. Hop off. Okay. Gotcha. So, um, got kind of greedy. And to be fair, I really wanted this kill, but I know since <laughs> you noticed me turning nose in, because I was like, I'm not going to get this kill. I really don't want to give this guy a broadside shot at me. And so, pretty much the game. Uh, he gets a nice smack on us there, but you know, nothing can kill us. I turn broadside now because I know it's over. I'm just trying to get the maximum amount of damage out. So, this 
Actually, this is our second smoke screen in the match. This smoke screen was kind of a slap in the face. Because <laughs> I would have gone undetected before he could fire again. However, he lives. <sighs> he actually gets two medals in this match. Uh, it's the Dreadnought and the Fireproof, I think, for doing absolutely nothing. But it's whatever. But if you will see the results, I made over 900,000 credits. I actually get over 4,000 XP. Uh, that is due to the premium bonus of 8 XP. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still. What an insane match, and tier 6 premium, premium bonus, and your credit boosters. I urge you to go for the tier 6 premium. Get a tier 5 if you're not comfortable, but I promise you, you will, I guess, enjoy tier 6. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate y'all, and have a good one.